especially speaking this. Uh, y'all a good day? It's gooder that you're in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's, let's give God praise for that. Hallelujah. We have, I know it's, I've been saying this for like the last couple weeks now. We have a lot of family on vacation right now. And uh, it's, it's kind of weird, ain't it? Because we're so used to seeing them and loving on them and, you know, feeling all the love and everything. Um, just keep them all in prayer. Um, praise God. Um, keep uh, Brother PJ in prayer. Hallelujah. Um, Sister Rosalind, always. Um, Brother Bruce. Um, also keep Ashley and the whole family. I mean, PJ, Ashley, and the whole family in prayer. Um, keep our pastors in prayer, Pastor John and Pastor Mary. Praise God. They're on the tail end of everything. Hallelujah. Um, our families are on vacation, Sarge and Sonia and um, the Bradys, right, um, Joey and Amanda. We've got a few more. Um, and I know if they're listening, they're like, oh, you forgot me. I did not forget you. I just can't think of it right now. Amen. <laughs> All right. Sorry, beloved family on Facebook. Uh, but uh, we pray a, a hedge of protection and traveling mercies over all of um, our family that's out on vacation right now. Amen. Praise God, Brother David and, and, and Sister Jackie are here. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Yeah. Mama Kay's here. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sister Stacy's coming too. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, look at this. Hallelujah. I guess I'll just keep bumping my gums and more and more people keep coming. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is Sister Stacy. Hallelujah. Give Sister Stacy some love. Praise God. They already clapped for you. They already clapped for you, but I wanted, I wanted you to hear it. I didn't want you to walk from there to there going, how come nobody's clapping? Everybody got clapped for. Nobody's clapping for me. <laughs> you, you go, girl. <laughs> it's so good to have a good time in the house of the Lord. Amen. Before I get started, um, I've already been prayed over and the service has already been prayed over, but we're going to open up in prayer. Um, I, I encourage everyone that, uh, that, that is able to... Um, to start plugging in in this new season um, as, ma as much as you can as far as with all the services we got going on. Um, I never make it a requirement. You'll never hear me say that. This is between you and the Lord. Amen. But this is what I want to promise you. Uh, when, when, when you. When you make it a priority in your life to fellowship with other believers, other beloved children of God, there's a promise that Holy Spirit gives you. Number one is you will become more intimate with God, and it could be you just sitting there and just listening to other believers. But it's his holy presence that blesses us with that love that we know that we're, we're safe around each other. You know what I mean? That we're not out to hurt one another. Listen, we all have flaws. We all do things unintentionally. Maybe some do it intentionally. But the glory of God is, is that he wants us to come together. This is the reason why Lord Jesus Christ came and died, so that he can live in you and abide in you and have a relationship with you forever. But here in my heart, this is where we're losing it right now. As, as, may I say this, as Christians. This is where we're losing it right now as Christians. We take that anointing from God and Holy Spirit now lives in us. And we have this amazing relationship with God, but then we forget about the body. Am I preaching this right? Are you all hearing what I'm saying? It's not you because you made it out at 130 degree weather to come out here, right? And, and, and to, to sacrifice your time and to be here with one another. But above all, you're here to bless God. See, hear my heart, family. And, and, and please, I'm not trying to beat up on anybody that's on Facebook that can't make it to church. God bless you and I speak life over anybody that, you know, can't get out of the house, whether it's because of sickness or you know, their job or whatever it is, I pray that God makes a change. But remember this, God will make a change, and he expects you to make a change because you ask to be a part of a church. It doesn't have to be Open Arms Community Church, amen? It, it just, just say it with me, go to church. Because, see, Lord Jesus came so that not only do we keep God in a box, Lord Jesus came so that he can live inside of you, but here it is. Here it is. You ready for this? Lord Jesus came so that Holy Spirit could bring us all together for such a time as this. Amen. For moments like this. Hallelujah. 
So having said that, when we know that God has deposited his spirit in us so that we all live together and we all abide together and we are all one, the beauty about this is, is that we now treasure, say when we protect, we protect the presence of God in our life, right? See, you know, there's no question about how much God loves you because Jesus Christ left heaven. Remember, he was always with the Father. And you could just see the Father and Son looking at each other and the Father saying, it's time for you to go. And Lord Jesus Christ looking at the Father going, okay, I'll be back. How many of you know that Lord Jesus Christ said that, right? The Terminator didn't say that. Lord Jesus Christ said that, okay? I'll be back, right? But the difference is when Lord Jesus Christ came back to heaven, he made a way and he brought all of his souls. That's all of us. Amen. Say with me, I belong to Christ my Lord. Let's welcome our brother here that came in. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome home, brother. God bless you. Praise God. So uh, tonight's uh, worship service is titled Faith Work. I ask for your prayer um, as, as I do my best in obedience and worship to deliver this message. Remember, beloved family, you'll hear me say it like a broken record. I'm not the teacher. Holy Spirit's the teacher. I'm worshiping God Almighty like you are right there sitting here. The difference is I said yes to the Lord as a pastor and this is what I have to do in what God has called me to do. Amen. So I just ask for your prayers because we are going to get kind of deep into this message. But I'm excited because it's going to bless us with a fresh anointing, a fresh power from heaven in how to not only activate the faith but to bless the faith and to encourage the faith and to watch the faith overflow in your life. Amen. How many of you want to see God's best in your life? Oh, come on now. Amen. I want to see his best. Hallelujah. Forget about this world. Forget about my best. I failed at everything in my life. I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Brother Cody's here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. I, 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 I love that. <laughs> Did you? Well, you just hit me up, brother. Let me know. Praise God. The wheels on the, the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round. All right, so let's get into this. Let's um let's pray. Praise God. If y'all would stand up with me, hallelujah. That was a long introduction, but it's okay. Amen. Thank you, beloved Craig. Actually, for that anointing, can you open us up for prayer and bless the service? Let me get, get the mic over there to you so everybody can hear. Father God, we come to you tonight, Father. Asking for your word to be spoke tonight, Father God. Father, we want you to know that you are welcome here at Open Arms Community Church. Father God, bless each and every one that came out tonight. And as the pastor said, in 130 degree weather. But it's for you. Yes, Father. Only for you. Only for you. And Father God, we just love you and we praise you and we thank you for everything. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's start off in Proverbs 18, 21. And this is going to be the foundation of tonight. But then we're going to break away from this and go into, the, into Ephesians when the Apostle Paul was uh, ministering to the church of Ephesus and what was going on there. God is going to break everything down line by line as far as, say with me, faith works. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Amen? There is no question about God's promise here, just right here. We could stay here all night long. And honestly, I thought we were, and then Holy Spirit said, no, <laughs> we got a lot to go through. So I said, okay, Lord. But we could stay here all night long because the power of death and life is in your tongue. When you truly examine as far as the power of your word, you have to get an understanding as far as on the molecular level. I'm not trying to sound fancy. Remember, I'm not the teacher. Holy Spirit is. But what I'm telling you is this, is that for so long, scientists claim that they knew that everything evolved. Greatest minds were convinced that there is no God. We figured it all out. We measured everything down to the smallest atom. 
And we know how everything, because everything was accidentally made. The witch is alive from the pit of hell. I'll tell you that right now. Listen, I'm going to make a declaration right here. I ain't come from no monkey. I came from God. Amen. All right. Hey, they got some Christians that actually believe they come from a monkey. You come, if you come from a monkey, come up here. I'm going to lay hands on you. Amen. You come from God Almighty. All right. And anyways, if you, if you say you come from a monkey, how come monkeys stop turning into people? Not just a hat rack, my friends. Huh? Not just a hat rack. <laughs> it's, it's okay to have a good time in the house of the Lord. Amen? But see, now when we go down to the molecular level of things, this is what blew all these scientists, all these great minds away. You see, they went down to the atom, and then they said, oh, look at the atom, the neutrons, right, these electrons. They, 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 they said, oh, we done figured it out. And Kay, they were so convinced that this, this proves our theory, that everything was made by accident. Until they examined on a molecular level. Say this with me, molecular level. Molecular level, that's, that's like vapor. And when they examined on this molecular level, they found this one measurement that blew everybody's mind. And this measurement, they called it a quark. To explain to you what this quark was and is and will always for eternity be, it's a sound wave. And they, they broke it down and they saw that there was this sound wave. And this sound wave was the one... That created everything. And say it with me. My father. My God. Spoke. Can I get an amen? That right there, God deserves praise. Amen. I'll tell you right now, that will preach. We could just stick on that all year long. Amen. But I just, I, Holy Spirit wanted to visit that, revisit that with all of us. Um, that was preached here over four years ago, right? Right. You remember, right, over four years ago. And the power of the anointing behind that was that there was a lot of us, beloved children of God, we did not know that, you know, until we got to see it because we had it up on the screen and everything. But here in my heart, when scientists can measure a sound wave, and then when they take sound waves and now they do different tests, there's this, there's this project that they did, and um, I'm asking Holy Spirit to, it's a Japanese um, doctor, he's a scientist. Um, I, I want to say his, his last name is Emoto, but forgive me if I'm wrong. But he conducted this, this experiment where what happens when he speaks life to water, and then he speaks death to another glass of water and then they examined these under a microscope once again on a molecular level and the one that was being spoken life to on a molecular level you could see like snowflakes like absolute beauty snowflakes and all these gorgeous patterns I say snowflakes because I'm not no scientist so don't judge me what do you call it Snowflake. But the one that was being spoken death to, they examined it on a molecular level, and it looked like glops of, of, of mud. It looks like just, it looked nasty. And they made a direct correlation as far as what positive words do versus negative words do. Can I get an Amen. So say it with me, speak life. God promised, and we've been in this for the last week, two weeks now. If you choose not to change the way you speak as a child of God, God promises that if you speak garbage, you will produce garbage in your life. And guess what? I minister to, I'm not boasting on myself, never rebuke that. 
I'm a worshiper. But a lot of people call out to me and want to talk and pray. Oh, I need you to anoint my house. My, I need you to pray over my family. And what I do is I tell them, let's just have a conversation for a while. I know you want me to come, but let's talk for a moment. And this is what I want to show you. In a matter of five minutes, Holy Spirit will show me the amount of garbage someone can speak. And let me ask you something. If the fruit is that bad in five minutes, how much garbage do you think is not only surrounding them, but is in their entire household? And then, listen, and then I understand, listen, I, I listen with, uh, with compassion. I empathize with people. I don't judge nobody. I will pray for you. I'll go and pray. I'll go and love on you. I'll go and anoint you. I'll do whatever Holy Spirit tells me to do. Amen? But hear my heart when I say this. God says, if you speak death, you will love that fruit. And now we're living right now in a world where people are like, what is happening? Why am I always sick? Why am I always hurting all over the place? Why are my children acting so crazy? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Well, what is being spoken in the atmosphere? See, if we can hold this thing and we allow God to speak through us, how much gooder would our life be? Amen? Amen. It's all him. Praise God. Listen, I'm a work in progress now. Today, Trish told me to hush up. All right? I'm not acting like I got it together in front of you. Don't let me ever fool you that way. No. I'll throw myself quickly under the bus. But guess what? We have to hold each other accountable, my beloved family. You know, if you're married, praise God. If, you know, with your boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, you know, you got to tell them, look, if I start bumping my gums and it ain't right, shut me up. Shut me up. I know God wants to, but if I get so prideful and emotional, I'm not going to jump. Let's just go on. Praise God. Your tongue has power. Use it wisely. Amen. Ain't that a good picture? Right? Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Say it with me. I am the body of Christ. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ died for all of us. Amen. And praise God, there's many, many more. Amen. But guess what? They're out there. All we can stay focused on is here. Amen. And this is Holy Spirit's church. Praise God. Speak truthfully. What is this saying? Say it with me. Do not lie. When we lie, this is what happens. When we lie and we think that we get away with it, it's a wolf trying to come into your heart, into your mind. How many of you believe with all your heart that God, Father, Agape, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that they know every lie that we spoke? Right? So my question is, why would we want to do that? Once again, I'm throwing myself under the bus. I used to do that all the time, little white lies. Why? Well, Mama K, it's to try to make people feel good. To be liked. The Holy Spirit says, why do you lie and think that you're getting away with it? Ooh. Lord, forgive me. Well, you ask for forgiveness and you know you're forgiven, but then the very next moment you do it again. I'm just confessing to you. This is how Holy Spirit convicts me. And I say, Father, forgive me. It got to the point, Brother Cody, where I had to fast. There's that word, Sister Jackie. I had to starve myself because God said, you know what, you're playing games with me. I want you to fast, I want you to get up on your face, and I want you to truly cry out because you are testing me. And glory be to God, when you have this intimacy with God, we all have it, amen? We all have this intimacy with the Lord. God Almighty, he sees you where you're at. And he will make the changes in you. You know, I mean, it was so, it was so bad. It, it was so, all these lies were so bad with me. 
when people would say, hey, you know what? We're going to have a party, and uh, we would really love for you to come out. Will you come? And I would straight up look at him and go, yeah, I'll be there. Knowing in my mind and heart, I ain't coming to your party. That's a straight up lie. But you know why I say, yeah, this is? I said, yeah, this is, because I don't want to hurt her feelings. Yeah, I'll preach, sis. Amen? Right? Say it like Sister Jackie, rebuke that. You got to say it with, with, some, with some cheese on it. Rebuke that. Right? So let's just, be, let's just be in agreement. Do not lie, okay? In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give. All right, when God says do not give, does that mean you, does that, mean that you actually have control over this thing? Right? Amen? We're all on the same page, right? When God says do not give, this means God is saying you have the power. Oh, come on, help me out, family. You're making me itchy. Help me out a little bit, please. When God says do not give, is he saying that you have the power, that he gave you something, and he's telling you don't give it away? Is that what that's saying right there? Praise God. Okay, we're all on the same page. You said, you said yes. Amen? No takesy backsies. Amen? No takesy backsies. We're all on the same, we're all in agreement? Are y'all ready for this? Do not give the devil a foothold. Can we get a hallelujah? hallelujah? So you're telling me God is telling you that you have the power over the devil and that the devil can't get a foothold in your life unless you give it? Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Hallelujah. And you notice this starts with this emotion called anger. The devil likes to toy with our emotions, don't he? He does. And guess what? We're not robots. We all have free will. We all mess up all the time. But beloved church family, if we're truly who we say we are, children of the most high God, purchased by the precious blood of Lord Jesus Christ, holy temples of Holy Spirit himself, that God Almighty lives inside of each one of us, we should look through those shortcomings we should look through those emotions and know that listen no matter Craig I know you're mad at me but I love you and I bet you I guarantee you Craig's gonna say I love you too or I could lose it on Craig and Craig's like look man brother I know you're mad and I don't like the way you, you spoke to me but guess what I love you I could already hear him saying that I didn't say nothing bad to him you guys stop looking at me like that I didn't say nothing all of you are like what did he say to Craig Oh, man, we have got to tell Elder Howard he's sitting in the back row. I ain't tell him nothing, all right? So stop it, okay? But I'm just, it's just in a story, right? So put it this way. Don't, say it with me, don't get emotional. Father God gave us these emotions so that we know at any, any point of our lives, whether we feel sad, guess what? God says, be happy. Right? Whether we feel stressed, God says, cast all your cares on him. Can I get a hallelujah? When we feel worried, God says, don't worry, you ain't going to hell. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Listen, sometimes we got to go to the most extreme to snap out of it. Right? And it's beautiful because when you look at this, look, at, all I can think of is pull up all these little emoji cons. For those of you who know me, I like putting these emoji cons in all my texts. It is true. <laughs> we need to put a glass up there. <laughs> Beloved Aaron's making comments. It's true. I love using these emoji cons. But here in my heart, all of these emotions were never created in us for us to idolize and worship. These emotions are there so that it can refocus us to the cross. Don't you love it that the cross, it looks like, right? It looks like cr cr crosshairs, right? Agape. Right? Poof, agape. Right? I got Care Bear. Poof, agape. Right? Say it with me, don't get emotional. We live in such an emotional world. And it's a fight. Listen, there's many of you all. 
Many of y'all, many of y'all prayed for me and, and Trish and so grateful for you. So grateful for you. There's no words. Amen. Agape. But I need, I, need, I need you guys to get this, that the devil wants you to, to make these emotions, and then all of a sudden now this emotion turns into a God. You know, when the word of God says, don't be anxious for anything, when the Bible says anything, Sister Lisa, what is it? Anything. Straight up, sis, beloved of God. Why are you going to yawn? <laughs> oh, my God, I'm preaching my heart out, sweating through my clothes. Brother David of all people, hallelujah. Well, let's just move on because Brother David's bored of this one, so let's go and move on. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands. Say it with me, don't be lazy. And they may have something to share with those in need, hallelujah. This is the bottom line, say it with me, do not steal. If you, if you have the spirit of laziness, Listen, hear my heart. Rest is important. Rest is godly when the focus is on him. But when the rest becomes two days, three days, four days, and the rest consists of playing video games, not doing nothing, that's demonic. I'm just calling it what it is. One, two, three, four days. Oh, I'm resting. Well, what are you doing while you're resting? You're getting in the word of God? Are you spending time with Lord Jesus? Are you blessing Holy Spirit? Well, how, how are you resting? How, how, how are you blessing God in this rest? Right? You see, when, when God says this, that anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, God is talking about, Holy Spirit in you. You see, Holy Spirit is the work of God. Can I get an amen? Lord Jesus Christ is the word of God, but Holy Spirit is the doer of the word. Amen? And if, if, if God is speaking to you, but then you refuse to do, God is saying you're stealing from me. May I repeat that? Thank you for asking. I'll repeat it. Nobody asked. <laughs> if God speaks the word over you and Holy Spirit is in you to do that work and Holy Spirit is willing to do it, but then you do this to Holy Spirit, you're stealing from God. Amen? And say it with me, no longer. No longer. Hallelujah. The beauty is, is that when Father God lays it on your heart to do something, I promise you this. It just won't get gooder and gooder. Right, Brother David? It just gets gooder and gooder. Amen? Say with me, do not steal. Do not let, do not let un, any unwholesome talk come out your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Say this with me, do not gossip. Amen? All this comes from Ephesians 4, and all we did was we went line by line. But as we open our hearts and allow God to teach us all this, what you will find is that Holy Spirit in you, God Almighty wants to be magnified and glorified in you. But it all starts with us making these little changes, and they're not big. They're not big changes, beloved. I'll tell you right now, the, the great thing about worshipers, beloved children of God, is many of you, bottom line, don't lie already. Many of you don't steal from God. Many of you are, are hard workers, right? The beauty is, though, is that there's areas, though, in our life where God is wanting you to repent. Of course, the biggest pandemic there is right now, guess what? It isn't COVID. It's technology. It's social media. It's video games. Right? Isn't it incredible? I guarantee you, you, you go to Walmart or wherever you go, and you see a teenager, they don't even look at you. They're all... Right? 
And here in my heart, family, if you got teenagers that do that, I'm not judging you. And I'm not telling you what's right or wrong. I'm just making you aware that's the generation now we live in. That is continuously, there's a focus, but it's not on God. The focus is, I'm not even going to act like I know what I'm talking about because I don't do social media. But the focus is on, here, I'll, I'll confess my garbage to you guys, right? Uh, hey, dude. They got another color out. I figured out why they call these shoes the way they call it. Can I, can I tell you how I know? It's got to the point where I told Trish, hey, honey, another color came out. She said, hey, dude, quit. Stop asking for another pair. And that's why they're called hey, dudes, huh? Yeah, thank you, Brother Aaron. You started it. Hallelujah. But look at the, look, look at the impact of do not gossip. You have the one that likes to gossip, but then you have the other one that's. Now Romans 10, 17, we don't have this on the screen, says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But hear my heart. If it ain't the word of God, then faith isn't coming, but what's coming? Worry. Anxiety. Sickness. Disease. Anxiety, hate, anger, stress. And it's all about garbage that you ain't got no business listening to. It's time for us to man up, to woman up, when someone's bumping their gums, to just say, stop. Stop. Let's pray. Amen. I don't want to hear about, oh, this person is doing this. That's why they ain't been coming to church. Guess what? God already knows that. We don't need to know it because he's the judge. All God is asking for us to do is lift that family up in prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So I'm going to say the, I'm going to say the one in red and you, you say what's in green. Okay. We're going to, Holy Spirit said this is how he wanted it as we conclude this evening. And um, I pray that we can do this. Amen. I speak what's in red, and you speak in green. Let's try this out. Brother David, you with me? I just, I'm just checking, brother. You, you, you <laughs> I love it. I could tease him. You ready? Do not lie. Praise God. Don't get emotional. Hallelujah. Do not steal. Do not gossip. Amen. Each sin needs to be replaced with grace. Amen. Grace. Let's say that together. Grace. Grace has a name. His name is Holy Spirit. Grace is not a credit card. May I repeat that? Grace is not a credit card that religion likes to teach. Religion likes to teach this word grace. That if you keep on messing up, oh, you have grace, you're covered, you could, you, don't worry about it. Rebuke that. Amen? Let's do it together. Rebuke that. Amen? That's not grace. See, religion teaches that. What Holy Spirit teaches is that his presence is the grace of God. And when his presence is in you. Because you know who the Lord is. Say his name, Lord Jesus Christ. You know that when you mess up and you hear this word grace, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, change me. Holy Spirit, I don't want to speak this way any longer. Holy Spirit, I'm not going to be angry like that any longer. I'm not going to be emotional, right? By the grace of God, there's many of us, Brother Chris, that come from all different backgrounds, right? When I say all different backgrounds, all different walks of life, right? You have the meanest of thugs here. You do. You have people that were running with the mob. You have people that have doctorate degrees. Here in Open Arms Community Church, you, you have the diversity, right? But here in my heart, through all the differences, you know, you got people that have been married. Elder Howard, 
Mom, Charlotte, how, how, how long y'all been married? Huh? Woo, 55 years. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, that deserves to stand up and give him praise. Amen. That's all for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, and don't you love it? Don't you love it? That is God's divine timing. Ha, agape, brother. Hallelujah. Don't you love it? That's God's divine timing in a worship service to call them out and ask how long they've been married. Number five is the number of grace. And they're at 5-5, five, five, grace upon grace. Whoo, hallelujah. That's gooder. Amen, that's gooder. Auntie, uncle, how long you been married? 49 years. Hallelujah, let's give God praise. Amen. We got 55, 55 right there. We got 49, 49 right here. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Huh? 36. Listen, give God praise. That's up there. Hallelujah. It just gets gooder and gooder. Amen. I'm just so grateful for you guys. Hallelujah. By faith. I love that laugh. By faith. Say it with me. By faith. Now let me ask you something. When we say this word faith, he has a name. What's his name? Hallelujah. Amen. I heard Father. I heard, I heard Lord Jesus Christ. I heard Holy Spirit. You're right. Agape. Amen. That's the eternal circle. That's our God. Can you break them up? Isn't that powerful right there? Just that revelation. You can't break them up. By faith, we understand that the worlds were formed by the word of God. Who is the word of God? Lord Jesus Christ. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Don't you love, I didn't know that we were going to open with that word quark. And when you get a chance, look it up, Google it. Read all the papers about it. Read all the studies. But that word quark is the measurement of sound. He spoke. He spoke the word and the world came to. Holy Spirit was waiting. You guys know the story. Holy Spirit waited and we don't know how long he waited. But he's God Almighty and guess what? His time is not our time. But Holy Spirit knew you're going to speak Jesus and I'm going to manifest Jesus. And in that manifestation that occurred, Father God spoke everything into existence. Every day he spoke and poof, there it was. Bunny rabbit, poof. Monkey, poof. I ain't come from no monkey. My God created a monkey. You hear me? Re rebuke that. There ain't no evolution. You hear me? Father God created all of this. Amen. I mean, look at this. Ain't, this can't come from no monkey. Masterpiece. <laughs> Say it with me. I am. A masterpiece. And yes, you are beautiful in all your ways. The glory and power of Almighty God is in you and all over you. Amen. We can't compare ourselves to any other. You're beautiful and gorgeous and almighty in all of your ways. For the blood of God covers you. And he lives inside of you. And everything is perfect. But it's us. It's us that when we start getting emotional, right? When we, when we start allowing things that we start thinking, all this mess, we need to come back to the foot of the cross. We need to now start doing faith works, amen? We need to start using the word of God. Not, hear my heart, family. Not, oh, well, I need to get in the word of God. I need to read my Bible. Okay, hear me. Great. Hallelujah, great. That's the Bible. That's the Holy Word. You have to get into that. Amen. But here's, this is where I'm coming to you before we close tonight. If all you do is get into the Word and you're trying to memorize scriptures and you're trying to know all the characters and you're trying to figure out everything that God did and all the miracles he did, but then you don't let Holy Spirit manifest his power and change you 
then what good is it? What good is it? Because last time I checked, the Pharisees and Sadducees that memorized the entire Bible, they're the ones that murdered Jesus. And guess what? I was the one too. So don't think for one minute that you're going to figure God out. God wants a relationship. God wants you to have a relationship with him. God wants you to let him in. Real quickly, like how many of you have hobbies? Praise God. If you feel led to share, what are your hobbies? Hunting and fishing. That's a good one. Elder Howard, what's your hobby? Huh? Grinding wood. And I've seen the furniture you built. Listen, the Amish ain't got nothing on our elder. I'll tell you that right now. Seriously, you want some heirloom. Heirloom? How do you pronounce that? That's a tomato, ain't it? Furniture too? Yeah, if you want heirloom furniture. Reading. Praise God, reading. What else? Hobbies. Your bike? Praise God. Pedal bike or Harley? Not a Harley. Motorcycle. Amen. Praise God. Is it peaceful? There you go. Hey, and I bet you the entire time you're just riding with the Lord. Amen. I know. I see. I see. Glory be to God. And guess what? Father loves that time with you. You need to hear this. Father loves that time with you. Because I guarantee you there's a lot of, there's a lot of souls that just hop on the bike and not take them along. Father God loves to read. What else? Make jewelry. Hallelujah, bling bling. You don't wear it. Hey, praise God. That's beautiful. Make jewelry. And glory to God, you know Father loves to make jewelry. Father God just told me to tell you this right now. He set jewels on Lucifer. That's how much he loved him. He set jewels. He adorned them with jewels. Even though he knew... I know what you're going to do to me. Huh? Lights? Oh, I know. I've seen it. Praise God. Listen, uncle got a building. If you're all ever on the market for lamps, hit that brother up. Amen? I mean, anybody else? Anybody else want to share what your hobbies are? Cooking. Same time. Same time. Hallelujah. Cooking. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for that anointing. Amen. See, where we're at with the Lord is this. Father God wants you to take him along. Your hobbies and your relationships. He wants to be the center of your marriage. He is the center of Open Arms Community Church. This is Holy Spirit's church. Amen. He wants to ride the bike with you. He wants to raise your children with you. He wants to do it all. The question that I have for you is, will you let him? Will you allow him to do that? Amen. Stand up on your feet with me. Praise God. We got a couple songs tonight. Um, let's give God praise for Brother Aaron up there. He, I feel bad. He... He wanted to go to young adults, but Holy Spirit kept him there tonight. And I'm, I'm grateful for you, brother. Um, as we always do, well, not always, but um, tonight we actually have a couple songs that was so sweet because Holy Spirit said, I want these exact two songs to play. But at the same time, I want to remind you, most of every night we're in worship, we have an elder here. We have an overseer of the church. Uh, if you need... An anointing from heaven. If you need to be touched by the Lord. if Whatever you need. We're going to be up here. Um, I think many of you know by now. But this just needs to be said. When you're here. It's one on one with God Almighty. Can I get an amen? And we don't, we don't mess with that. All, all of the leadership know. That's between you and God. We're not going to come and be disruptive or nothing. But hear, hear my heart. But when you get up and you're walking back and Holy Spirit says, I need you to go confess something or I need you to go to an elder, go to a deacon. Please be obedient and do that. Because Father God has equipped his holy church. And we've seen the miraculous upon miraculous take place here. 
And I'm going to tell you right now, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. And we're just boasting on Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you feel that, please come to the front. Amen. Let's say this together. Faith work. Are we going to start doing work? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.